أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم سورة القارعة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم القارعة ما القارعة وما أدراك ما القارعة Some of the brothers must have recalled one more surah starts in this way الحاقة ما الحاقة وما أدراك ما الحاقة القارعة that suddenly striking calamity Malqariya. What is that suddenly striking calamity? Vamadra ka malqariya. And what will make you realize what that suddenly striking calamity is? Yawma yakunun nasu kal farash il mafsus. The scene of Asa. It has come so many times in the Bakki surahs. The day when mankind shall be like scattered moths. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْإِحْلِ الْمَنْفُوشِ And the mountains shall be like carded wool. فَأَمَّا مَنْ سَقُنَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Then as for him whose balances of good deeds are heavy, فَهُوَ فِي يَشَكِ الرَّادِيَةِ He shall be in a well-pleasing life. اللَّهُمَّ رَبَّنَا جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ And as for those whose balances of good deeds are light. فَأُمَّهُ هَاوِيَةً Then the bottomless pit of hell will be like mother to them. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا هِيَةً And what will make you realize what that is? نَارٌ حَاوِيَةً A fire blessing. سورة التكاسر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الهاكم التكاسر O mankind Your rivalry for competition for amassing riches makes you unmindful You want more, 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 more wealth, more riches and you are busy in this, you are lost in this and you remain unmindful of the real facts of life, what is going to happen, what is going to happen to you on the Day of Judgment. Until you reach the graves, No. But then you shall come to know, you shall realize what were the realities. And again, then you shall come to realize, and you will know. Kalla Allah Taala Muna Ilm Al Yakin. Would that you knew with knowledge of certainty. La Tarabun Al Jaim. You shall certainly see the hellfire. Summa La Tarabun Nahain Al Yakin, and then you shall see it with the eye of certainty. Now these two words which have appeared here, Ilm Al Yakin, Ain Al Yakin. There are two stages of knowledge, rather three. Ilmul Yaqeen, you know something by inferring, by some logical conclusions. This is Ilmul Yaqeen. When you see it, this is Ainul Yaqeen. For example, if there is smoke rising, by Ilmul Yaqeen you come to know there is a fire. You have not seen the fire, but you have inferred, because there is smoke going up, so there must be fire. But when you see the fire, now this is Ainul Yaqeen. There is a third term used in Quran twice, Haqqul Yaqeen. Although this has not been used in that sense, but 
some of the scholars count them, that this is the third and final level of the knowledge, haqqul yaqeen. When you put your hand in that fire and it burns, now you have the real conviction this is fire. But when you are seeing the fire, maybe, that this is some illusion. So, maybe some hallucinations, even through senses, the knowledge that you get, you know, that can be wrong. So, ilmul yaqeen, ayrul yaqeen, haqqul yaqeen. For the Qur'an, you know, in Surah Al-Waqiyah, and then in Surah Al-Haqqah, innahu la haqqul yaqeen. This word has appeared for Qur'an. ثُمَّ لَتُسْغَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمُ Then on that day you will be questioned concerning the worldly blessings that we have given you. We gave you this and this and this and this. What did you do? There is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَ ابْنِ آدَمْ حَتَّى يُسَلَى الْخَمْسِنْ No human being will be able to Go away. Then will, he will be made made to stand before the Lord for that accountability. Unless he is questioned about five things. And Omorehi Fimafna, regarding his age, where did you spend it? In what business? What occupation? What were you doing? Van Shababehi Fimafna, especially the youth, the youthful, you know. And there are energies, you know. In what condition did you pass that period of the life? Vaan malehi min anak tasabahu wa fi baan faqahu. About the wealth, from where did you get it? Through permissible means or haram means, forbidden means. Where did you spend it? In the correct way? For the needy? For the deen of Allah? For your you know, lawful rights of your body, of your children, or in luxuries, to show off your wealth, tabzir. And finally, How much did you practice what you learned? You went on learning, 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 you accumulated the knowledge of a library in your, in the cells of your brain, but you are not practicing it. Then this knowledge will be used as a witness against you. Al Quran hujjatun laka awaleka. This Quran is either a guide for you or against you, a witness against you. Oh Allah, He read me, but then even then He did not practice me. ثُمَّ لَتُسَلُّنَّ يَوْمَ اِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمَ اللَّهُمَّ حَاسِبْنَا حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Now the most profound surah of Qur'an, one of the smallest surahs, Surah Al-Asr, consisting of three ayat. And there are three surahs consisting of three ayat. No surah of two ayat. The least number is three. Surah Al-Asr, Surah Al-Qasr, Surah Al-Nasr, three surahs. And this is the most profound, according to Imam Shafi, Rahmatullah, and I, Law Tadabbar al-Nasu hadhi surah, la wasiyatuhum. If people ponder only over this surah, this will suffice to guide them. In another saying he says, La alam yunazzal min al-Qur'an siwaha la kafat al-Nas. If nothing was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi except this surah, this surah would have been sufficient for the guidance of humanity. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Walas, by the fleeting time, the time which is running, 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 it's going, and this is only capital you have, and like ice, it is melting. If you don't sell your eyes, it will melt away. So by this time, what is that psalm of life, that poem? 
Art is long and time is fleeting. And our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. With every beating of the heart, we are coming closer and closer, step by step, to our graves. Just like if the dead body of a general is taken to the grave, you know, there is the beating of the drum. With each beating of the drum, this funeral is progressing. So, Rafil tujhe ghadi aal ye deta hai manadi, gardu ne ghadi ur ki ek aur ghata di. When the clock rings, eleven, one more hour has been diminished from your life. One more hour, gone. Don't say that your life is increasing. Every hour your life is decreasing. But also, inna linsanu nafi khosu. All mankind is doomed. To be doomed is the general rule. To be saved is an exception. Inna linsanu nafi khosu. All mankind. That is why Imam Radhi says, Telam. أن هذه الآية فيها وعيد شديد لأن الله تعالى حكم بالخسارة على جميع الناس إلا من كان آتيا بهذه الأشياء الأربعة وهي الإيمان والعمل الصالح والتواصي بالحق والتواصي بالصبر أن دل ذلك أن النجاة معلقة بمجموع هذه الأشياء There is a very big threat in this surah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided that all human beings will be doomed, thrown into the hell, except those who fulfill four conditions. And this is decisive to say that the salvation in the day of judgment depends upon fulfilling the four, all the four conditions. Now when I started my work, this Dars of Surah Al-Asr was the starting point. And the selected course of study that I have edited, the starting point is Surah Al-Asr. I have written also, so I can't go into detail at this time. All men, all human beings are doomed except illa lazid amanu, except those who have faith, real faith, conviction, iman. Wa'amil salihat, and they did good deeds. And Tawasa bil Haq, they exhorted each other to whatever is correct and just. Tawasa bil Sabra, they exhorted each other to perseverance and steadfastness. May Allah give us the courage to fulfill all these four prerequisites of salvation. Surah Al Humala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Now this surah depicts a character. When somebody turns away from Allah, is not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa taala, he doesn't think that he will be resurrected and he will have to answer his deeds. Then he his moral character definitely sinks down bottom. And this is the picture. وَلُوا لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Woe to every slanderer, defamer. This is the, this is what interests them most. Slanders and defaming people. The mean activity. الَّذِي لَمَا عَبَالَ وَعَبْدَدَ Number two, who amassed wealth and kept on counting it. Seeing the balance sheet every year, oh, now. These are my assets, and this much I have and own. Yahsabu an namalahu akhlada. He thinks that his wealth will make him live forever. Now, what does it mean? People have used their wealth in order to make their name at least. They know we shall die, but my name should remain. These big monuments, these Ahram in Misr. Why? This is the urge to continue. If not physically, 
to continue living in the memory of the people. I recall, you know, a very beautiful quote, quotation. Calm and self-possessed, still and resolute, the pyramids echo unto eternity. The defiant cry of man's will to survive and conquer the storms of time. Man wants to survive and conquer the storms of time. That is why he has built such a high pyramid for himself. Kalla, no, not at all. La yum bazanna fil hotama. He will be thrown in the hotama. And what is that? That hotama? Vabadra kamal hotama? How will you come to know what is that hotama? Narullahil muqada. It's the fire of Allah kindled by Him. And don't think it's like the fire of this world. Allati tattaleo alal afrida. Which will mount straight on the hearts of the people. We have today the, what they call the therapies, you know, the heat passing through the skin. Skin doesn't feel the heat, it goes to the muscles under. In the same way, fire, which is not affecting your body, straightly attacking your heart. That will be the quality of that fire. Allati tattaleo ala al-affida, bounce over the hearts. And then it will be closed upon them, vaulted upon. Fi amadim mumaddada. In outstretched columns. Adhanallahu min. Now the rest of these surahs mainly deal with certain aspects of the early period of the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, Surah Al-Feel, the very famous incident that took place, and that was the year when Muhammad was born, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amul Vilada, it was 570 or 571, Christian era. What happened? At that time in Yemen, Yemen was governed by the Abyssinians. And from the king of Abyssinia there was a governor, Abraha, in Yemen. These were Christian, these people. They were under the Roman Empire. So this person became very envious of Kaaba, that people from all corners of Arabia go to Kaaba to pay pilgrimage. So he built a very high cathedral, so that people should come here. But no Arab came there. They kept going to Kaaba. So in fury and anger, he, he decided, I'll destroy Kaaba, demolish it, raise it to ground. So he proceeded with a very big army, which had some elephants also. He himself was mounted on an elephant. Now this army came from Yemen till Makkah. Nobody in the way could check them. It was a very big army. And the elephants for these people of Arabia, something new, what is it? So frightened like anything. Then he, you know, stayed outside Makkah and sent a person to Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu he was the chief of Mecca. And he said that we are we have not come to fight you, only we want to demolish this house. The answer Abdul Muttalib gave was, also we can we can't fight you. We don't resist, can't resist you, you know. As for this house, this belongs to Allah. If he wishes, he will save it. And then he requested for his 200 camels that the army people of Abraha had looted and plundered, which belonged to Abdul Muttalib. And Abraha said, oh, I have come to destroy your sanctuary, and you are more mindful of these camels of yours. 
He said, I own the camels. So I'm thinking about them. I don't own this house. This, this house is owned by someone else. He will take care of it. So when they attacked, what happened? Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbu kabi ashabil fi'l. Have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant, the army accompanied by elephants? When it was coming forward, at a certain stage, the elephants sat on which Abraham was sitting. And they tried everything to goad it, but it didn't move. Then, you know, Swarms of small birds appeared from the site of the Red Sea. And they had very small stones made of baked clay in their beaks and feet, and they threw them. And these small pellets, they acted as bullets. Most of the army destroyed. And whosoever could have an escape on way back, there was, you know, an epidemic broke out of smallpox, of measles, pustules all over the body. And Abraha and all the people, they perished. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his house. Did he not make their plan go astray? And he sent against them swarms of birds, flights and flocks of birds, striking them with the stones of baked clay. Thus he made them like the straw which has been eaten up. Surah Al Quraysh, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Now, these are the conditions of the people of Makkah and around it. First of all, their economic, economic backbone or lifeline was trading. They became the link in the East West trade. So I have explained many times regarding the nation of Sabah also. Previously, the people of Yemen, they were the proprietors of this trade. But after the flood of Arim, they were destroyed. So now this trade came in the hands of the Quraysh. All the merchandise from eastern islands, India, China, it used to come on the ships and boats and unload it at the coast of Yemen. And all the merchandise from Europe came to the coast of Syria, Palestine. Now because there was no Suez Canal, and that, you know, round the Cape of Good Hope, that route had to be discovered about 800 years later, 1498. So, now between these two points, caravans going there, coming down, going up, to the north, to the south, and this way they became the link, inevitable link in the east-west trade. And they got the monopoly. Why? No caravan could pass without being looted and attacked, except the caravan of the Quraysh. Why? They were the custodians of Kaaba. And you know the idols of all the tribes, their gods, they were placed in Kaaba. So to say, they were hostages with the Quraysh. How could they loot the caravan of Quraysh? So they traveled without any fear. So this was the basis of their prosperity. They left Quraysh. To make Quraysh accustomed. Accustomed to what? They are becoming accustomed to journeying in the winter and the summer. For this purpose, now it is mahzuf, understood. We granted them protection from any attack. This was from Allah. 
ڈیو ٹو دی ہاؤس آف اللہ ڈیو ٹو بیت اللہ فل یا بدور ابا حاض البیت سو ان ریٹرن دے شوڈ فرشپ دی لارڈ آف دس ہاؤس وائی ہیو دے ٹیکن دیز آئیڈلس فار ورشپ آل دیئر پروسپیریٹی ڈیپینڈس اپون دس ہاؤس دس ہاؤس واز بلڈ بائی ابراہیم اینڈ اسماعیل علیہ السلام فار توحید نوٹ فار شیر اللہ ذی اٹھا مومن جو دیٹ لارڈ آف دس ہاؤس ہی ہیز فیڈ دیم اگینسٹ ہنگر وامن ہم ان خوف اینڈ ہی ہیز گیون دیم دی سیکیورٹی اینڈ پیس فرام فیئر Now the third, what was the moral condition of this society at that time? This is the subject matter of Surah Al-Ma'oon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ara'ayta al-lazee yukazzibu bid-deen. Have you seen the person who denies the recompense? the judgment, the reward of the hereafter. But this was the main thing. They never said there is no Allah. They believed Allah. And they accepted that He is the creator of all the universe. وَلَيْنْ سَعَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ And also about their small gods and goddesses. They never said that they are the creators. Or they give us the nourishment and sustenance, no? How will I so found in the Allah? They are going to intercede on our behalf before our Lord. So there was a very fine demarcation. But the real thing was that they didn't believe in resurrection. That was the root cause of their decay regarding morality. Arayta ladhi yukazzibu biddin. Have you seen the person who denies and belies the judgment, the compens, the recutal, and the reward of the hereafter. Fazalika ladhi yadhul yateen. So he is the one who repulses the orphan. Not kind to the orphan. Why? Why not to eat up all the belongings and wealth of the orphan. You know, so, so detailed instructions given in the beginning of Surah An-Nisa about the wealth of the orphans who are under your care. If you eat anything from it, you are eating and you are putting into your stomachs life, coal, burning coal, burning cinders. وَلَا يَهُمُّ عَلَىٰ تَعَمِ الْمِسْكِينَ And the second manifestation of their low morality and he urges not the feeding of the poor and hungry but to speak of feeding himself he doesn't ask anybody else also lest he should ask him so they were very cunning in this respect if I say to him Okay, there are these hungry people, you feed them. He can say, why don't you do it yourself? So, when I go to Allah, Kamil Miskeen, you don't say anything to me, I won't say anything to you. That's the gentleman agreement between us. For when will the Muslims, woe to the performance of Salah. Salah was there. Because Hajj and Salah, these two things were established by Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. They have disfigured, they have changed. Number one, the Salah, that was now a mere ritual and nothing else, no spirit. Just as we have made it a ritual, a mere ritual. رَهَ گَئِ رَسْمِ عَزَانْ رُوحِ بِلَالِ نَ رَهِ فَلْصَفَا رَهَ گَيَا تَلْقِينِ غَزَالِ نَ رَهِ It's a ritual. Juma is a ritual. Hajj is a very big ritual. A person goes for Hajj and comes back. No difference in his behavior or character. As he went there, in the same condition he comes back. When he went there, he was involved in riba, all other things, haram shah. And when he comes back, he started again. So what is the such? Alladheena hum 
فی ان سلاد ہم ساہون دے آر ناٹ مائنڈ فل اینڈ دے آر ہیڈ لیس آف دا اسپرٹ آف دا سلا بٹ وی ہیو ڈن بٹ ان ایڈیشن دے ہیڈ دس فکر دی سلا آلسو دے یوز ٹو کلیپنگ آف ہینڈس اینڈ وسلنگ وتھ ماؤتھس تسلیتم و موقع سو اٹ بیکیم مور آف اے فن دین ایکچولی ورشپ الذين هم يراعون whatever virtue was there to feed the hungry for for example as i quoted abu jahl if they fed the hungry we we also fed the hungry more than them but this was to show off not to please allah not to hope the reward in the hereafter that is out of sight out of mind So what can be the purpose of doing anything good except to show it to the people so that they say, oh, he is a noble person. No. He has done a good deed. Alladheena hum yuraoon wa yamnaoon al-maaoon And they go so low regarding human relations that refuse even a small assistance or kindness to others. For example, you know, to borrow some give me some salt or can i borrow the fire from your fire place even that was they were not ready to do for each other so this is the picture of their moral decadence in this background now arose the son of the messenger hood of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam surah al-qawsar bismillahir rahmanir rahim ان اعطينا كل قوسر ويرلي شورلي او محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وي هاف جيفن يو اول ذا جود ان ابندنس اكوردنج تو سم تراديشن ذس قوسر از اولسو ذا نيم اوف ا فاونتن ويچ ويل بي ذير ان ذا بلين اوف ذا جادرنج يوم القيامه اند ذا بلين اوف حشر when everybody would be very thirsty very thirsty very thirsty then this fountain of kausar and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be the in charge whosoever from his ummah but his ummah is the one his ummah is the one who has followed him followed his example practically so their thirst will be quenched from that fountain of kausar literally and this is the saying of ibn abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما that kausar means khair e kaseer abundant good of every kind now actually then the exfoliation of this came before the world what allah gave to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam nobody could even imagine in the beginning of his mission that this would come to him فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنَحَرَ So, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, you pray to your Lord and offer sacrifice. This is, so to say, the picture of Eid al-Azha. We go to pray, to Rakat. We remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pray to Him, then come back and sacrifice the animals in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنَحَرَ ان شادی کا ہوا الابتر شورلی اٹس یور اینمی ہو شیل بی کٹ آف فرام دی روٹ ناؤ دس ابتر واز اے ورڈ وچ واز یوز بائی دی ایرب فار اے پرسن ہو ہیڈ نو میل چائلڈ آئیڈر نو سن واز بورن ٹو ہم اور ہو سو ایور واز بورن ڈائڈ ان انفینسی ناؤ دے تھاٹ وین ہی ڈائز ہز نیم ول ڈائی ود ہم No progeny. Progeny continues with the sons, not with the daughters, basically. So when two sons of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which Allah gave him through Khadija radhiyallahu taala, when they died, so the Quraysh, the enemies, they rejoiced, especially Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, and they said, "Don't worry, Muhammad is up there." 
He has no son now. His name will be finished. No one will be there to keep his name alive. So Allah is hurling that taunt upon them. In Nashaniya kahu alabtar. Verily, your enemies will be the ones whose name will go off. Even their own progeny will not like to mention that we are the sons of Abu Lahab. <laughs> Can anybody boast? No. Surah Al-Kafirun. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ayuha al-Kafirun, la a'abudu ma ta'abudun. ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد ولا انا عابد ما عبدتم ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين it is very important and it must have been revealed it is a makkan surat no doubt but it must have been revealed at the end of the makki period when after 12 years long you know admonition and dawa and preaching and teaching proved to be of no avail to the majority of the people of Quraysh at Makkah. Now it was sort of a parting of ways. Oh, Ya Yuhal Kafirun, and this is the only surah, only place in Quran, where Ya Yuhal Kafirun, Ayyuhal Jahilun we have in Surah Al-Zumar. Qul afagayr Allah ta'amurun ni abudu Ayyuhal Jahilun. But that's only one place. And this is the only place. Oh, you kafirs. Otherwise, Quran says, Ya Yuhan Nas, Ya Yuhan Nas, Ya Yuhan. Oh, people, oh, mankind. Because Dawa needs this type of address. But this surah is not from Dawa. It is, so to say, saying that the Dawa is finished now. By gone. Say, oh, the disbelievers, I don't worship whom you worship. Nor you worship whom I worship. What's in the, between the lines? Actually, the mushrikeen, they said, we also worship Allah. Allah is common between you and us. Allah said, the, Allah says to Muhammad, tell them, you are not worshipping Allah. Because Allah is the one who has no associate whatsoever with him. So you have created an Allah of your own thought, your own imagination. You are not worshipping the Allah whom I am worshipping. Name might be the same. But Musamma, to whom that name is being given, absolutely different in my mind and your mind. And I am not going to, this is the final, I am never going to worship whom you are worshipping. Nor are you going to worship whom I am worshipping. But you is your deen. For me is my deen. So it's a parting of ways. Go you your way, I am going my way. Maybe I am going to Medina. Okay. <laughs> Surah Al-Nasr. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iza jaa Nasrullah wal-Fatr. Wa raita al-Nas yadkhuluna fi din Allahi afwaja. Fasabih bihamd rabbika wa astaghfir innahu kana tawwaba. When the help from Allah comes and victory Kisses your feet. Most of the people think that this surah is Madaniya. And it was revealed after the victory had come. Actually, in that case, it should have been Izja. It is Izaja. Iza refers to the future. It was a prophecy, actually. And this is Makki surah, according to me. All these surahs we are reading from Suratul Mulk up till now. They are all Makki, no Madri Surah. According to my opinion, only the Muawwazat and are the two Madani Surahs that come at the end. Otherwise, all these Surahs are Makki. So it was said there as a prophecy. 
That oh, Muhammad, the time will come. You are facing hardships, no doubt. You are seeing no way. But the time will come. When that time comes and the help of Allah arrives and victory comes to you, it kisses your feet. Barayat al-Nas ayat khuluna fi din Allah afwaja. And you see people entering the deen of Allah in multitudes. Now what is deen of Allah? The system of life where Allah is supreme. This is deen of Allah. We have in Surah Yusuf, deen al-Malik. Ma kana le ya khuda akhaw fi deen al-Malik. Hazrat Yusuf could not detain with him his brother bin Yamin, according to the law of the king. Yusuf al was not the king. The king was the one who saw that dream. And because Hazrat Yusuf al salam gave an interpretation of that dream, so he rose to that position, a very high position. He was a very big officer, so to say, maybe finance minister, maybe food minister, Maybe agriculture minister, sort of that thing, but not king. So he was under the rule of the king, Daniel Malik. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to devise, you know, a special thing for him, so that he could detain or retain his brother with him. So when, you know, a king is accepted as monarch, as Firaun, you know, said, Alay Sali Mulko Misr, Bahadil Anwaru, Hadil Min Tahti. Is not the kingdom of Egypt for me? I am the king. And all these irrigation channels are under my control. So this is the deen of king, deenul malik. And deen of Allah, obedience to Allah, whole life under this obedience to Allah. Now somebody is entering this deen of Allah, it's not necessary that he has iman also. He has accepted the obedience. So he is in the, in the deen of Allah. Do you follow what I am saying? He has accepted the citizenship of this Islamic state. We don't know whether he has Iman or not. Some of you must have recalled that ayah number 14 of Surah Al-Hawjarat, قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ وَآمَنَّا قُلَّمْ تُوْمِنُوا وَلَاكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ these Bedouins are claiming we have come to believe. Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you have not at all come to believe. All you may say is, you have surrendered, you have submitted, you have accepted the supremacy of the law of Allah and the deen of Allah. So when that victory will come, and you will see people entering the deen of Allah, accepting the supremacy of the divine rule, in multitudes. Fasabbe bihamdi rabbika wastafir. Then at that time, you should glorify your Lord with His praise and also ask for His forgiveness. Ar Rabbu Rabbun wa inta nazzal wa abdu abdun wa inta A servant or a bondsman is a servant. Howsoever high he might rise. And Allah is the Lord, howsoever low He might come. He comes to the first heaven every night. Muhammad went to the seventh heaven on the night of Miraj, ascension. But even there Muhammad was abd. And Allah was Lord. So having reached that position also, never think that you will be very absolutely free from any shortcoming. Shortcoming may abide with there. But we cannot have this on the analogy of our shortcomings. This word of Zamba has also come in Surah Muhammad, Zamba, and Surah Fatah. But you know, our sin and Huzur, this sin of Muhammad, absolutely different. There's the Hadith, Prophet says, Verily, on my heart also, sometimes I feel there is some curtain has come. And we apologize to Allah. And I 
ask for his forgiveness 70 times every day. But what was that sin? A slight diminution in the intensity of relationship. This depends upon the how sensitive you are to these things. So for this you ask the forgiveness. Surely in the Hukanata Vaba, he is ever relenting, always ready to accept the repentance from his servants. Now this surah, I think, should be read with Suratul Inshirah. Today we began with that surah. Faiza Faragta Fansab. Faiza Faragta is here. When the deen of Allah will become supreme in the Arabian Peninsula, your work will be done. Why we sent you for that purpose? Huwa allazhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen il haqqil yuzhira huwa ala deen il kulli. When the deen has become dominant, now your mission is accomplished. Faiza faragta fansab wa ila rabbika farhab. Now you meditate to your Lord. Devote wholly and solely, you know, to Him. The same thing here. Iza ja nasullah wal fatf. ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بهم لربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا سورة اللهب Again something concerning the seerah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أبو اللهب was the uncle and Ume Jameel his wife both were the worst enemies of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't have any brother nor he ever saw his father. But he has uncles. Now we see how varied about four we know. One loved him, protected him, but didn't believe in him. One believed him and loved him, but after six years. The third one also finally came to believe in him. But he never played any prominent role in the struggle. So much so that up till Badr, he had not declared that he is Mormon. And he came to Badr along with the army of Kuffar. But the Prophet knew that he is a Mormon. And the fourth one is Abu Lahab, the worst enemy. And as I told you, the worst character. The best character of that time, Abu Bakr, Atta. And the worst character of that time was this Abu Lahab. And this incident happened when the command came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Fasta abe ma tumar. This ayah is included in the last portion of Surah Al-Hijr. Now say loudly, O Muhammad, what had been commanded to you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we ascended the hillock of Safa. And he raised a cry, Wa Sabaha! This was the custom of the Arabs. If some news came to you that such and such tribe is planning to attack you, this night they will attack you. Now you want that this news should reach all the people immediately so that they can take the precautionary steps, whatever they can take. So what did he used to do? Take off all his clothings, absolute naked, ascended some high place, and then cried out, Wa Sabah! Woe to the morning that is coming. A very bad morning is coming. Now two things happened. Where his voice reached, people heard this. Where the voice was not reaching, people saw. A naked man standing on their own. And they called it Naziri Oriyan, the warner, the naked warner. Now here's the lesson for us. If you have to make dawah, you see, what are the means available today? Whatever is haram in it, delete. Whatever is permissible, you have to use. If you don't use, then you are to blame. So when Muhammad ascended and Wa Sabah, he cried, people ran to him. But then I can, can't go into detail. 
when he presented his message, the first response was from Abu Lahab. Tabban laka ali haza jama'atana. Woe to you. Perish you. Did you call us for this thing? We thought there is some danger. You have got some news. You want to warn us from some possible attack of any tribe. So in response, this surah was revealed. Tabbat yada abhi lahab wa tabb. Actually, the both hands of Abu Lahab have perished. The hands of Muhammad are not going to perish. And Watab, and he himself has been perished. Magna anhu maluhu amakasab. His wealth will not avail him, nor what he earned. He met a very, very sad end. He couldn't go to Badr. He was covered also. I said, worst character. And because he was the custodian of the treasure of Kaaba, so he was the minister of finance, so to say, of their government at Makkah. And he has stolen, it was, people used to say that he has stolen a golden, you know, calf from that, the treasure. So that was the name that was given to him, the stealer of the calf. So he doesn't have any good reputation whatsoever. His wealth is not going to avail him. But what happened? In Badr also he sent a person, you know, mercenary, paid him. Go in my place. He couldn't go. Then this person was so rash against Muhammad sallallahu Two of the daughters of the Prophet were engaged to two of his sons. He said, go and give talaq to, to those, both of them, in the open, address Muhammad and say, we, we give talaq to your daughters. And they did it in the open. And this was a very big humiliation. Both later on died. The Prophet prayed against them. For one who was more vocal, the Prophet said, O oh Allah, let loose on him one of your dogs. He was coming back from Syria, leading a caravan. During the night, they were staying somewhere. And he knew that Muhammad has prayed this thing against him. So he used to have, you know, fire around him where he rested during the night. But a tiger came, jumped over that fire, ate him up, went back. Sayasla Naranza Talahab. Then you know he also died. Pustules appeared over the whole of his body. And then you know this was bad smell coming out. And there were, you know, the organisms in the, those wounds moving. So nobody from his family could go near him. And then when he died, nobody was ready to touch him. With the help of a wood. They dug a grave and then, you know, just put him, pushed him by the, by this wood, not touching him. This was the end. Tabbat yada abhi lahabim wa tabba maagna anhum aluhu wa ma kasab sayasla naran zata lahab. He will enter the war of fire which is flaming. Wa mratuhu, not only he, also his wife. Hamma alat al-hatab, the carrier of fire wood. Upon her neck, a rope of palm fibers will be there. Now, she was a very rich lady. She used to have a very fine and costly necklace around her neck. But in the hereafter, this necklace will take the form of a rope of the fibers of dead palm tree. And with that, it will bring, bring you know, fuel and add to the fire of her husband, adding fuel. Because, you know, wives, either they support you in your deen or they oppose you. And if they are also on the wrong path, they are supporting the wrong path. In the same way, she will be kindling the fire of hell for her husband. Surah Al-Ikhlas, the surah about which the Prophet has said, is equal to one-third of the whole Qur'an. 
Surah Al-Quran. The most profound surah on the subject of Tawheed. But Tawheed fil Aqeedah. And Tawheed fil Zat. In the person. But Ayatul Kursi is the most profound in the Tawheed fil Sifat. Attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawheed fil Sifat, highest treasure. The biggest treasure is Ayatul Kursi. Tawheed fil Zat, the biggest treasure is this Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah, the only one. Rather be alone. None with him. None like him. No partner with him. Allahu samad. All eternally ask him, beseech him. He is the besought of all. We have read the ayah in Surah Al-Rahman. Yes, Allahu man fi samawati wa man fi lawd. Everyone who is in the heavens or in the earth, keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need anyone, but everybody, everything needs him. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Neither he begat nor he was begotten. No father or mother, no son or daughter whatsoever. Walam yakullahu kuhuwal ahad. And there is none co equal with him or comparable to him. In the end, we have two sentinels guarding this Quran. Al Mu'abbadatain. A very, very beautiful, you know, pair of surahs. And there is an opinion of Abdullah ibn Masood that actually these surahs are not part of Quran. They were revealed for treating Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when some Jew had done some sorcery against him. But the consensus of the Ummah is that they are a part and parcel of Quran. And my opinion, these two surahs are only the Madani Surahs in this last group of Makki Madani Surahs. In the first Surah, only one Surah was Makki. That is Surah Al-Fatiha. And Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Maida, Madaniyat. This is the converse. From Surah Al-Mulk to Surah Al-Ikhlas, all Makkiyat, none Madani. And these two are Madani. All Auzu bi Rabbil Falak. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of the Dawn. Min Sharri Ma Khalak. From all the evil of all that He has created. This is very noteworthy. Whatever is created is definitely incomplete. Completion is only for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. All creation has to be incomplete from one aspect or the other. And this aspect of incompletion adds to it some sort of sharf, some sort of evil. So I take refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of everything that He has created. And from the evil of the darkness when it overspreads. Because, you know, in the night the criminals are active and so on. The jinns also, the evil spirits as you call them. And from the evil of the blowers at the knocks, knocks, sorcerers, magicians. And from the evil of an envier, a jealous person. When his malignant envy is carried out in action. Hasidin is a hasada. When he is actively engaged in bringing his jealousy into action, translating it into practice. So these are the evils which befall human beings from without, outside. Now there is a very big evil which comes from within. And that is the subject of the last surah. Surah Tundas, 
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل اعوذ برب الناس ملک الناس الہ الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجن والناس سے آئی سیک ریفیوج فرام دی لارڈ آف مین کائنڈ ناؤ دس لارڈ یو نو از دی ٹرانسلیشن آف رب واٹ از رب دی اونر دی سسٹینر دی پرووائڈر دی ڈیولپر آل دیز تھنگس گو ٹو میک رب اللہ از دی لارڈ اور رب آف دی مین کائنڈ Malik in Nas. He is the king of all mankind. Sovereign. He is to be obeyed. His laws are to be enforced. His obedience is to be accepted. Ilah in Nas. And the God of mankind. God to whom you call for help. for any deliverance from any affliction which has come to you. To whom you pray and whosoever grants your prayers is your God. Ila. So, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ These are the three attributes we may say of Allah. If you remember, these are the same which are mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین اور ملک یوم الدین یا کا نابود نابود الہ دیس تھی سنگ من شر الوسواس الخناس فرم دی ایول آف دی وسپرر ہو وسپرز ان دی ہارس آف دی پیپل اور دن ریسیڈز اور ویڈراز گوز بیک من الجنة والناس whether he be from among the jinn or mankind now this is an attack through your own baser self not outside nothing is attacking you from outside your own id or libido your own baser self is activated so now the shah is coming from within you although this fire is ignited by him who is whispering with you may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give us the understanding of this Quran and the courage to resolve that we should practice it, propagate it, and establish it, establish it in the world. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us.
together we can make a difference